Thank you for choosing the 13 by 11 wood room with louvered roof from Yardistry. We're confident you'll find the assembly straightforward as long as you work through each step in the assembly manual. In addition, this Helpful Hints video offers tips and tricks we've learned along the way for handling some of the more critical steps. Step 1. Inventory. Before beginning assembly, sort out your inventory by laying each of the wood parts and hardware on the ground. Then using the stamps or marked reference numbers, take a few minutes to cross-reference each one with the list in the assembly manual. Remember, we are always here to help. Contact us if you find a part that is damaged or missing. Take a moment to record the carton ID stamp for each box that you receive. There is a space on page 10 in your instruction manual to write down the first five digits that come before 14459 and also the letter at the end. Step two, drain post assembly. On a solid, flat and raised surface, place a post to beam bracket into the top of each drain post. In the correct position, at the end of the bracket with the wider space between the holes faces down, and the holes will align with the holes in the top of the drain post. Loosely attach the bracket to the drain post with hex bolts. Then using a measuring tape, ensure the post to beam bracket is six and a half inches above the top of the drain post. When the bracket is in the correct position, tighten all bolts. Insert the downspout assembly into the bottom of each drain post. The elbow of the downspout should fit nicely into the notch of the drain post. With a helper, stand up the drain post and place the post mount plinth with drain over the notched opening so the end of the downspout fits into the hole in the post mount. Next, place a post mount plinth so it interlocks with the post mount plinth drain and attach with one screw in each post mount. Attach the remaining post mount plinths to each drain post, ensuring that the post mounts interlock with each other. At the end of this step, you will have a right drain post assembly and a left drain post assembly. Step three, post assemblies. Continuing to work on a solid and flat raised surface, insert a post to beam bracket into each of the posts. In the correct position, the end of the bracket with the wider space between the holes faces down and the holes will align with the holes in the top of the post. Loosely attach the bracket to the post with hex bolts. Then using measuring tape, ensure the post to beam bracket is six and a half inches above the top of the post. When the bracket is in the correct position, tighten all bolts. With a helper, stand up the posts and attach two post mount plinths to the bottom of the post so they interlock with each other. Attach with one screw each and then attach the other two post mount plinths in the same manner. When all post mounts are attached to the post, install the remaining pan screws. At the end of this step, you will have a left drain post, a right drain post, and two post assemblies. It is important to note which post is which for later in the assembly. Step four, long beam assembly part one through three. It is best to do step four on a flat and solid raised surface. Place a long center beam so the notches are facing down, then connect the notches of two long end side beams. Install nine T-nuts into the long center beam in the locations specified in your manual. Flip the boards over so the T-nuts are facing down. Next, place two long side beams with the lap joints tight together, then place the long beam insert on top, making sure the countersink holes are facing up and the four holes in the center align with the four holes on the long beam side. It is important to check that all holes in the beam insert align with the holes in the long side beams. You do not want the beam insert covering any of the holes. Then attach the long beam insert with screws. Lay the long side beams along with the long beam insert on top of the long center beam and long side beam assembly. Line up the bolt holes and loosely attach with hex bolts. The long side beams should overhang each end of the long side beams by 1 and 9 16 inches. Once you have the correct measurement, have a helper look down the boards to ensure they are straight. Then tighten all bolts. Flip the assembly over so the T-nuts in the long center beam are facing up and insert wood screws. Do not install any wood screws onto the four center holes in the long center beam. Step five, short beam assemblies. 
continuing to work on a flat and solid raised surface. Connect the lap joints of a short beam RT and short beam LT. Install the T-nuts in a short beam RT and attach the hex bolts through the short beam LT. This will be your outside beam A assembly. Connect another short beam RT and short beam LT so the lap joints interlock. Install T-nuts into a short beam LT and attach the hex bolts through the short beam RT. This will be your outside beam B assembly. When these assemblies are finished, the hex bolts should be installed on opposite sides. Step 6. Short beam A assembly. Step 6 is best completed on a flat and solid raised surface. Using a helper, connect a right short beam and a left short beam to each end of the short beam center so the lap joints are tight and the grooves align. The groove should be facing up and towards the bottom of the board. Install two T-nuts into the right short beam and left short beam, then flip the assembly over so the T-nuts are facing down. The groove in the boards should be facing down and towards the top. Place the outside beam assembly A on top with the hex bolts facing out. Using three long pins, make sure the holes align and loosely attach the two and a half inch bolts in the top holes and two and three quarter bolts in the bottom holes. The shorter bolts are attached to the T-nut that sits in the groove on each end. Have someone help align the boards then make sure the outside beam assembly A overhangs each end by 1 and 9 16 inches. If the measurement is not correct, loosen the bolts in the outside beam A assembly and adjust the boards. Once you have the correct measurement, tighten all the bolts and remove the pins. Clearly mark this assembly with an A anywhere along the groove. This will help you identify it later in the assembly. Do not mark the ends of this assembly as they will be visible once the beams are installed. Step 7. Short Beam B Assembly Continuing to work on a flat and solid raised surface, using a helper, connect a right short beam and a left short beam to each other of the short beam center. The lap joints should be tight and the grooves should be aligned towards the top of the board. Install two T-nuts into the right short beam and left short beam, then flip the assembly over so the T-nuts are facing down. The groove in the boards should be facing down and towards the bottom. Place the outside beam assembly B on top with the hex bolts facing out. Using three long pins, make sure the holes align and loosely attach the two and a half inch bolts in the top holes and the two and three quarter bolts in the bottom holes. The shorter bolts are attached to the T-nuts that sit in the groove on each end. Have someone help align the boards then make sure the outside beam assembly B overhangs each end by 1 and 9 16 inches. If the measurement is not correct, loosen the bolts on the outside beam B assembly and adjust the boards. Once you have the correct measurement, tighten all bolts and remove the pins. Clearly mark this assembly with a B anywhere along the groove. This will help you identify it later in the assembly. Do not mark the ends of this assembly as they will be visible once the beams are installed. Step 8. Short Beam A and B Final Assembly On a flat and solid raised surface, lay a short beam assembly A down so the groove and T-nuts are facing up and secure with 12 wood screws. Complete the same process for the short beam assembly B. Next, lay both the short beam assembly A and short beam assembly B together on edge so the grooves on both assemblies are at the top and facing each other. Then insert three long pins into the through holes from the outside of one of the assemblies. This is an important check that you have assembled both short beam assemblies correctly and do not run into issues later in the assembly. Step 9. Middle Beam Assembly Part 1 through 5. Continuing to work on a flat and solid raised surface, Connect a middle long beam A and middle short beam A with the groove facing down and along the bottom, making sure the lap joints are tight. Have someone help align the boards, then lay a mid beam insert on top with the countersink holes facing up. Make sure all holes align, then attach with wood screws. 
Next, remove the backing on a piece of weather seal and attach it flush to the bottom of the middle long beam A and middle short beam A next to the mid beam insert. This will make the middle beam A assembly. Have someone help you place the middle beam A assembly on edge with the lap joints tight and the groove faces out and to the bottom. Next, place a middle long beam and middle short beam beside the middle beam A assembly with the lap joints tight and the grooves facing out and towards the bottom. Insert three axle through pin short through the mid beam insert and middle beam assembly A. Two through the middle long beam and one through the middle short beam. All pins should be inserted from side opposite of the groove. In the non countersink holes in the middle long beam, middle short beam and middle beam assembly A, install T-nuts, then loosely attach the assemblies using the six middle countersink holes. It is important to note that four hex bolts are installed through the middle countersink holes in the middle beam A assembly and two through the countersink holes in the middle long beam. The bolt holes on the end of each assembly should remain open for now. Next, making sure the grooves in the assembly are towards the bottom, insert a center beam bracket into each end of the assembly. When the bottom of the bracket sits flush with the bottom of the assembly on each end, attach with hex bolts through the remaining countersink holes. Finally, secure the assembly together with wood screws, then insert two pan screws per center beam bracket. Step 10, post placement. There are two different post configurations available for your 13 by 11 wood room with louvered roof, as outlined on page 28 of your manual. Depending on the final location of your structure, you will need to choose one of the two following options before continuing with the assembly. For option one, the downspout drain will exit onto the long beam side or 13 foot side of the structure. This is the configuration used for the remaining of the assembly instructions. In this option, your short beam assemblies, once assembled, would look like this. It is very important to note the downspouts in each drain post face outward in this configuration. For option two, the downspout drain will exit onto opposite short beam sides or both 11 feet sides of the structure. If you are using this option, your short beam assemblies when assembled will look like this. It is very important to note the downspouts in each drain post face upwards in this configuration. It is also important to note which drain post will be assembled to which short beam assembly as it will be opposite to what is explained in the upcoming steps in the manual. Step 11, short beam post assembly part one through three. It is best to do this step on a solid and flat raised surface. First, install two T-nuts into the groove side of the short beam assembly A. You'll know it's the short beam A assembly from the A you marked in the groove previously. Next, lay the left drain post down on the right hand side with the downspout facing outwards and the post beam bracket facing up. Then lay a post assembly on the left side with the post to beam bracket facing up. The post to beam brackets should mirror each other when the posts are laid out in the correct position. Slide the short beam A assembly onto the post beam brackets, making sure the groove is towards the top, that both ends are flush to the side of the post and left drain post assemblies, and that the T-nuts are facing away from the brackets. In the correct position, the hole for the crank handle will be 17 and a half inches from the outside of the, of the beam on the post assembly side. Check that the beam is square to the posts, then attach the short beam A assembly to the post beam brackets with two and a half inch hex bolts in the top holes and two and three quarter inch hex bolts in the bottom holes. This is the short beam A assembly. On the short beam A assembly, measure 41 and 3 16 inches from each end of the beam and mark it. Place one gusset flush to the front of the post so it aligns with the mark. If the gusset does not align with the mark you've made, flip it 180 degrees. When the gusset aligns with the mark and is flush to the front of the post and short beam A assembly, have a helper hold it in place and attach the wood screws. Then, pre-drill through the countersink holes and attach with two leg screws. Repeat this process for the other side. On the short beam B assembly, install two T-nuts into the groove side of the assembly. You'll know it's a short beam B assembly from the B you marked on the groove previously. Next, lay a post assembly on the right hand side with the post beam bracket 
facing upwards and the right drain post assembly on the left with the downspout facing outwards and the post beam bracket facing up. Once again, the post beam brackets will mirror each other in the correct configuration. Slide the short beam B assembly onto the post beam brackets, making sure the groove is towards the top, that both ends are flush to the sides of the post and right drain post assemblies, and that the T-nuts are facing away from the brackets. In the correct position, the hole for the crank handle will be 17 and a half inches from the outside of the beam on the post assembly side. Check that the beam is square to the posts, then attach the short beam A assembly to the post beam brackets with two and a half inch hex bolts in the top holes and two and three quarter inch hex bolts in the bottom holes. This is the short beam B assembly. On the short beam B assembly, measure 41 and 3 16 inches from each end of the beam and mark it. Place one gusset flush to the front of the post so it aligns with the mark. If the gusset does not align with the mark you made, flip it 180 degrees. When the gussets align with the mark and is flush to the front of the post and short beam B assembly, have a helper hold it in place and attach with wood screws. Then pre-drill through the counter sunk holes and attach with two lag screws. Repeat this process for the other side. Step 12 long beam post assembly part one through three. Before beginning step 12, lay the two short beam assemblies down so the beams are close to each other. The hex bolts in the beams are facing up and the drain post assemblies are to the same side. It is important to note the location and orientation of the downspout drains as well as the location of the hole for the crank. When the assemblies are laid out correctly, the holes for the crank will be on the same side and the downspouts will be pointing outwards. Ensuring this layout is critical for later in the assembly process. On a solid and flat array surface, place the long beam assemblies so the T-nuts are facing up and install two more T-nuts into each end. With three helpers, stand up the short beam assemblies and move them to their final location. It's important to have somebody holding each assembly until the frame is complete. Have someone help you place one long beam assembly on top of the post beam bracket. The four pilot holes in the middle of the long beam assembly should be towards the top. If they are towards the bottom, lift the assembly up off the brackets and flip it so they are in the correct position. Check to make sure the long beam assembly is flush to the top and outside corners of the short beam assemblies. Then attach with hex bolts. Repeat these steps for the second long beam assembly. Make sure the frame is square. Then on a long beam assembly, measure 41 and 3 16 inches from the outside of the short beam assembly and make a mark. Place one gusset flush to the front of the post so it aligns with the mark. If the gusset does not align with the mark, flip it 180 degrees. When the gussets align with the mark and is flush to the top of the post and long beam assembly, have a helper hold it in place and attach with wood screws. Then. Pre-drill through the countersunk holes and attach with two leg screws. Repeat this process to install the other three gussets on the long beam assemblies. Once the frame is assembled, from inside the assembly, install two and one quarter inch wood screws into the ends of each short beam assembly and four two and a half inch screws into each end of the long beam assemblies. Step 13, check frame dimensions. When the frame is fully assembled, Check to make sure all the measurements on page 35 of your manual are met. It should measure 15 feet 4 and 5 8 inches diagonally between posts in both directions. Use your foot to gently adjust the posts if needed. Along the short side of your assembly, it should measure 11 feet from outside of posts to outside of posts. Along the longer sides of the assembly, it should measure 13 feet from the outer edge of each post. Once again, Use your foot to adjust the post if needed. Take some time to make sure the post assemblies are square to the beam assemblies and the beam assemblies are level. Step 14, attach middle beam assembly parts one and two. On the inside of the assembly, on each long beam assembly, place a mark one and a half inch from the location where the two long side beams meet. Next, Position the middle beam assembly with the axle pins towards the top, between both long beam assemblies so the middle of the center beam bracket aligns with the marked locations. 
check to make sure the pins align with the holes for the crank and the other through holes on the short beam assemblies. When everything is in the correct position, attach the center beam brackets with wood screws. From the outside the assembly, in the four pilot holes in the long beam assemblies, pre-drill, then install four wood screws on each end. When attaching the middle beam to the long beam assembly, you may need someone to push on the outside of the long beam assembly before installing the wood screws. Step 15, attach louvered rails part one and two. On a short beam assembly, place a louvered rail assembly 2378.3 into the groove. The groove in the short beam assembly should be towards the top. Align the third bushing on the louvered rail assembly to the hole in the beam. You'll know it's the correct bushing because it has an arrow on the top and the hole is larger in size. Place three long pins through the short beam assembly and into each of the bushings with arrows on the louvered rail assembly 2378.3, then attach with pan screws. Next, place a louvered rail assembly 826 tight to the end of the louvered rail assembly 2378.3, then attach with pan screws. Repeat this process for the other short beam assembly. For the middle beam assembly, place a louvered rail 2378.3 in the groove, making sure the bushings with the arrows on top slide over the three previously installed axle through pin shorts. When the louvered rail is in the correct position, attach with pan screws. Tight to the end of the louvered rail, place a louvered rail 826, then attach with pan screws. Repeat for the other side of the middle beam assembly. Step 16, attach post blocks. Post blocks are only attached to the top of the post assemblies. They are not to be attached to the top of the drain post assemblies. Step 17, attach gutter drain corners. It is important that the following precautions are met before applying the sealant. All surfaces must be clean and dry, rubber gloves and safety glasses must be worn, and temperatures must be between five and 35 degrees Celsius, or 41 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit. When applying the sealant, it is important to wipe away any excess with a cloth or paper towel before it skins over. Please reference page six of your manual for additional warnings and first aid treatment. First, remove the cap and cut a small piece off the nozzle of the sealant tube. Then place a small bead of sealant about half an inch from the edge of the each gutter drain corner. Next, place a gutter drain corner on each drain post assembly so it fits into the downspout and sits tight to the beam assemblies. This will get attached in a later step. Step 18, rain gutter assembly part one through three. You will need three people to complete this step. First, find the center point of both the short and middle beam assemblies and make a mark half an inch from the bottom of the beam. When measuring on the short beam, ensure you are taking the measurement from the end of the long beam and not the post. On the middle beam, on the side closest to the post assemblies, make another mark one inch from the bottom of the beam. Next, apply a small bead of sealant about half an inch from the edges on three gutter corners and two gutter connectors. Have one person place a gutter corner onto the post block so it sits tight against the beam assemblies. Slide a rain gutter D into the gutter corner along the short beam assembly, then place a gutter connector with sealant on the end of the rain gutter D. You want to make sure all holes align and the bottom of the gutter connector sits at the half inch mark you made previously. It will be helpful to have one person in the center holding the gutter connector in place for this part of the assembly. Next, have another person hold the gutter drain corner in place and slide a second rain gutter D into the gutter connector and the gutter drain corner. When all the pieces are aligned in the correct position, attach with pan screws. Repeat this process on the other short beam assembly. On the end of the middle beam closest to the drain posts, have a helper place a gutter corner flush to the bottom of the beam and hold it in place. On the other side of the middle beam assembly, place another gutter corner so that the bottom aligns with the mark one inch up from the bottom of the beam and have someone hold it in place. 
It is important to have this side sit one inch up from the bottom of the beam to ensure that the water will drain in the correct direction. Next, slide a rain gutter D into the gutter corner, making sure the joints are tight and all holes align. Then place a gutter connector so the bottom sits flush with the center mark, half an inch from the bottom of the beam. Once all joints are tight and holes aligned, attach the gutter with pan screws. Repeat these steps for the other side of the middle beam assembly. On each end of the long beam assembly, have a helper hold each of the gutter corners, making sure that the gutter corners sit flush to the bottom of the middle beam on the end closest to the drain posts and one inch up from the bottom of the beam on post assembly side. Next, slide a rain gutter C into each gutter corner, making sure the holes align and all joints are tight before attaching with hand screws. Complete these steps for the other long beam assembly. Step 19, apply sealant. At each end of rain gutter C and rain gutter D, apply a small, evenly distributed bead of sealant over the connector joints. Smooth the sealant into each of the joints so it forms a continuous watertight seal. Be sure to wipe away any excess sealant as necessary. In the seam of the middle beam assembly, apply a small, evenly distributed bead of sealant along the length of the beam. Smooth the sealant out so it forms a continuous watertight seal, then wipe away any excess. Finally, along the tops of each of the rain gutters, gutter corners, and gutter drain corners, apply a small, evenly distributed bead of sealant. Once again, smooth the sealant so it forms a continuous watertight seal and wipe away any excess before proceeding to the next step. Step 20, louver assemblies part one through four. When attaching the louver end plates to six louvers, use the standard pin to help align it properly. In the correct position, the holes in the louvered end plate will align with the holes in the louver and the standard pin will fit into the top square slot in the louver. Once the plate is attached, remove the pins. In the remaining louvers, insert a standard pin in the square slot on each end. You'll want to install the standard pin so that the end with the holes is inserted into the louver. On the other end of the louver with the single hole, push the pin in so the second hole aligns with the screw hole then attach with a pan bolt. On the other end of the louver, push the standard pin in so both holes are visible in the slot and loosely attach a pan bolt into the hole closest to the end of the louver. You should be able to move the pin back and forth easily in the slot. If the pin does not move easily, check to make sure the bolt is in the second hole in the pin and then loosen it slightly. Next, Place a louver end plate on each end of the louver, making sure it fits over the pins and the holes align with the holes in the louver. Then attach with pan screws. On the end of the louver with the bolt slot, ensure the pin can move easily after the louver end plate is installed. Finally, from the outside of each louver end plate, loosely install a pan bolt with nylon washer and lock nut. This hardware is needed in a later step. At the end of this step, you should have 36 louvers with the standard pins attached and 6 louvers without standard pins. Step 21. Attach louver assemblies part 1 through 6. Start step 21 at the end of the frame assembly with the post assemblies. This is also referred to as the crank and side in your manual. With two helpers, attach a louver with standard pins installed to both the short beam assembly and the mid beam assembly. It is important to have the louver in the correct orientation before you lift it into place on the unit. The end of the louver with the single hole will be installed into the short beam assembly and the end with the slot will be installed on the mid beam assembly. Make sure the tip of the louver end plate with the hardware previously installed is facing upwards and the pin in the slot side of the louver is pushed all the way in. Install the end of the louver without the slot into the short beam assembly first. Then align the pin in the other end of the louver with the bushing. Next, slide the pin out of the louver and into the bushing on the mid beam assembly. When the louver is in place, insert a pan bolt into the empty hole on the standard pin on the mid beam end and tighten both bolts. Before moving on, make sure all bolts in the louver are tight. Next, with two helpers, 
place a louver without pins in the third position so the slotted end of the louver fits over the previously installed pin in the mid beam assembly. It is important to make sure the holes in the previously installed pin are visible through the slot in the louver. If the holes are not visible, remove the louver and rotate the pin so the holes are in the correct position, then attach with pan bolts. From the outside of the assembly on the short beam side, insert a drive pin through the bushing with the arrow on top and into the louver. You'll want to make sure the hole in the drive pins align with the single hole in the louver. If the hole does not align, remove the drive pin, rotate it and reinsert it into the assembly and attach with a pan bolt. If you're having difficulty inserting the pin into the bushing, use a scrap piece of wood and a hammer and gently tap the drive pin into place. From outside the assembly, place a gearbox over the drive pin. Make sure the gearbox is level, then attach with lag screws and wood screws. Place the hook of the crank handle onto the loop of the gearbox. Next, with two helpers, place two louvers without pins so the slotted ends of the louver fit over each other of the remaining previously installed pins in the mid beam assembly and attach with pan bolts. Once again, Make sure the holes in the previously installed pins align with the slot in the louver. From outside the assembly, insert one long pin per louver through the bushing and into the louver. Make sure the hole in long pin aligns with the single hole in the louver and attach with a pan bolt. If the long pin is difficult to insert, use a piece of wood and hammer and gently tap it into place. In the last position, closest to the long beam assembly and drain post, Install one louver with pins as completed previously in the step. Reference page 50 in your manual if needed. Once the first five louvers have been installed, crank the handle on the gearbox so the louver in the third position is upright. This will make the next part of the assembly easier. With a helper, place a louver link so the rounded face is pointed inward and the flange on the louver link faces up and out on each end of the louver assembly. Remove the pre-installed hardware from the louver end plate, then insert the bolt through the louver link from the outside. Followed by the nylon washer, the louver end plate, and finally the lock nut. The end of the bolt should be flush to the end of the lock nut. Do not over tighten these bolts. Complete this process on both ends of the first three installed louvers. Next, install a louver with pins into the beams in the position that aligns with the end of the louver link. This process will be the same as you have completed earlier. Once the louver is installed, place a second louver link over the end of the first and attach the newly installed louver as completed previously. Attach the louver links to each end of the remaining louvers. Finally, install the 15 remaining louvers with pins, taking care to ensure they are installed in the correct orientation and all bolts are tight. Then connect these louvers to the louver links as you did in the previous step. Once all the louvers are installed on one side of the unit, turn the crank handle to make sure all of the louvers open and close easily. Step 22. Attach louvers assemblies, second side. When installing the louvers on the second side of the assembly, make sure that the slotted end of the louver is closest to the short beam assembly and the end of the louver with the single screw hole is attached at the mid beam assembly. Repeat step 21 to install the louvers on the second side of the assembly. Step 24, gearbox lockout and winter maintenance. When preparing for high winds and or winter conditions, turn all louvers to the upright or open position and attach the lockout and quick link. This will prevent the structure from blowing over due to high winds and the louvers from breaking due to snow and ice loads. 